I got a great question about pitching mechanics on the website the other day and it reads, I'm coaching at a high school in Mississippi. I have a pitcher who is a sophomore and he throws mid-80s already, but I have noticed on his pitching mechanics that he is dragging his back leg or foot like you would tell a pitcher to do if he wanted to slow his changeup down. I have worked with him on chair drills and trying to get his heel to the sky, trying to prevent him from dragging his back leg or foot. He has gotten a little bit better on dragging his back leg and foot and getting his heel to the sky, but he is still, for the most part, dragging his leg, foot, toe after he pushes off the rubber. Is there anything else I can work on with him to help correct this problem? Because I know he has to be losing some velocity. Thanks for your help. Love the website. Great stuff. That's a great question, Coach. Thanks for joining the newsletter and, and asking it. Uh, and I think your answer lies not in where you found the problem, which is out here at the end of the, the delivery, but a lot earlier in the delivery. I made a few uh, a video a few weeks ago called the most important part of the pitching delivery. And to summarize that video, I just say that the most important part of the pitching delivery is the beginning. Because everything that happens later is an effect to what you do in the beginning. For your question specifically about how to get this back leg to not drag around or to, to get it up more, get more up and over the sky, two things have to happen. And your player may be lacking in one or in both of those areas. The first one is the amount of energy and speed that he creates going down the mound in a linear fashion, his linear energy. He may not be getting enough linear energy. The second thing is going to be pitching against that front leg. You leveraging that linear energy that he created, embracing against that front leg, pitching against it. Now if he does those two things correctly, or any pitcher does those two things correctly, that leg is going to have no choice but to come up and over that front leg. So it's going to be an effect to good energy this way, and then pitching against that front leg. A great example of this is a pole vaulter. A pole vaulter is going to run as fast as they can and then stick that pole onto the ground, and where are they going to go? That energy is going to stop. They're going to leverage it, stop it, and the, the, the energy travels up the pole and shoots them over the high bar, right? Same idea goes here. If he's creating enough linear energy and pitches against that front leg, everything else is going to work around that. He's going to brace up on the front leg, and then his hip to shoulder separation is going to unload, and now everything is going to come up and over that front leg. So, my suggestion to work on this is going to be to get video, slow motion video from the side. So if he's pitching this way, you would have your camera there, get it on slow motion and watch it. Okay? See how much energy he's creating coming down that mound, how much leg drive he has. And then also pay attention to his front leg. Is he collapsing on his front knee and continue after he lands, does he continue to go forward with his front knee? Watch the front knee specifically and see how far after he lands does he go forward. The best pitchers are going to brace up against that front leg. A lot of the higher velocity pitchers are straight at release point or slightly bent. Okay, But the more bent you are or the more that you continue to move forward, the, the more energy you're going to leak and the less you're going to have to come up and around. I call that walking through. When a guy kind of just falls through with his front leg or continues going with his front knee, it's kind of like walking through and that back leg kind of just drags through. Also on the, on the leg drive, the linear energy that you're trying to watch to see if he's creating, you can see how much he's creating by his drag line. So the back foot actually does want to drag a little bit because it's going to be playing catch up, right? So it's going to drag a little bit before it braces up against that front leg and then comes up and over. So it's okay if you see a drag line from the pitcher's toe for a little bit, six or eight inches is okay on the drag line, all right? But after that, once that energy hits that front leg and the hip to shoulder separation, the rotational energy unwinds, that's when you want to see that leg to start to come up and around. So don't worry about this so much. Don't focus on the end of the delivery. Focus more on his linear energy, his leg drive, and how he's using his front leg to pitch against. And the leg will come up and over as an effect. All right, great job noticing the problem though. 
You just gotta look a little further back in the delivery when you're trying to solve it. So, hope that helps. Check out my pitching program if you haven't already. It breaks down the mechanics in full, plus a ton of other great information. So, check that out if you have a chance.